Hi guys, I'm Brooke and Pippa is somewhere back there hiding. She's just not having it today for some reason. So I promise you she's back there. That's her like little back you can see right there. But Pippa and I travel full time out of my 2011 Honda Pilot. We've been on the road since August of 2020 and we have somehow made it over two and a half years before ever doing van life, which is definitely what I would consider my travel style to kind of be right now on the east coast and let me tell you i wasn't super impressed <laughs> now in full disclosure i am going to say the way i did this trip was probably not the right way to do it and i know that there are people who love the east coast but the same way that people love to go to the mountains or the beach everyone just travels different and has different travel preferences so just because i mentioned somewhere or something that i did or did not do does not mean that you may not find joy in traveling on the eastern side of the united states doing it van life car camping style but for me personally i will probably not be back for a long time there needs to be like a guidebook somewhere maybe somebody who has more drive than i do to put together a guide between the differences between west coast the western half of the United States, the Midwest, the Northeast, and the Southeast because they are all different and traveling through all of those different places has been so different for me that they all have their pros and cons, let me tell you. But I can definitely say after this trip that I am very happy with the way I have been traveling on the western half of the United States and that is why I'm headed back. But I will say just because I'm going to mention a few negatives or things like that in this video does not mean that I didn't have fun on my trip this whole time. I have been now traveling on the eastern side of the United States for seven weeks. So this was not a short trip. This wasn't like a one week thing where I tried to make it work. I spent some significant time in a lot of these states and it's just not for me. It caused me to burn out pretty quickly and I'm really itching to get back out west. But I will say the Midwest was not as hard as I thought. I need to maybe make a specific video about the Midwest. I don't know if I traveled to the Midwest during the correct time, but I am the most familiar with the Midwest since that's where I had family. That's where I lived a lot of the time. If you guys didn't know, I started my travel lifestyle out of Indiana, but had previously lived in Tennessee right before that. And I have family in Iowa and grew up traveling <laughs> around the Midwest like that. So that wasn't super hard for me to figure out and find things to to do. And I also will say I like being outside, but I am not a hiker. So my complaints in this video are not going to be about the lack of like mountainous outdoorsy space or anything like that. It's just going to be more like the practical day-to-day -day living because I am very much somebody who likes to just like hang out at a park or like hang out with Pippa and people watch or go sightsee a little bit and like that's kind of it. I am not like a super athletic athletic outdoorsy content creator, which I know there are plenty of those, but I am not one of those people. Start with maybe like Pennsylvania East. <laughs> so I went back to Pennsylvania because I grew up outside of Pittsburgh and I had a friend that I wanted to visit while I went through town and that was completely fine. I joked by that point that I was on the Cracker Barrel tour of the U.S. because it very much felt like the only places to park were rest areas and Cracker Barrels and that was honestly fine with me. It does not bother me to sleep in a Cracker Barrel parking lot, especially when you are like going to a destination. So I went through the Midwest knowing that I was trying to make it to Pittsburgh by a certain kind of date that I had in my mind. I also had to do some other things while I was there and so I had given out the date that I was going to be there to more than a few people so I was kind of on a time crunch. And then after Pennsylvania, I was making my way to Salem to meet up with my friends. So I knew I was going all the way into New England and that that would be a very busy area. 
and surprisingly, <laughs> out of everywhere that I traveled on this seven week trip of mine, I preferred New England travel to all of it. I thought there was going to be so many people, traffic was going to be so hectic, this, that, and the other. It did not bother me at all because where there is a lot of people, there is a lot of public parks, a lot of public rest areas, a lot of planet fitnesses, a lot of places to go get food and to try new things and things to see. And I had like a blast. I threw from Pennsylvania to the end of leaving Delaware to leave New England. I had such a great time and I don't know if it's because I knew people there and was meeting up with multiple people there or if it was just because I liked the vibe and that's just somewhere that I didn't realize I would like so much but I found it so easy to find public spaces to take Pippa go on walks and to try new foods and to have fun things to do. I don't think it hurt that I had perfect weather obviously when I was also in New England. It had not quite hit that like crisp crisp fall yet so the nights weren't super cold and during the day I wasn't like sweating or overheating. It wasn't buggy. It wasn't muggy. It rained a little bit while I was there but that was to be expected and I extended my trip. I ended up staying in Portland, Maine for I think like 10 or 12 days and absolutely loved it. Fell in love with Portland. If you haven't watched that vlog, you can see the footage from there. And I just was having the little best time of my life. Now, <laughs> Will I say, because I was having so much fun, that it was the same kind of fun that I have out west? Absolutely not. When you travel on the east coast in that kind of situation, even if it is New England and you're having the fun, most fun little time exploring your heart out, you are constantly having to move around all day long and that does get exhausting so because I was still working through a lot of it even though I did take um, a big chunk of time off when I was in Portland I was still working as I was traveling and so that did mean that I was spending a lot of time sitting at rest stops getting work done getting stuff filmed for you guys getting things edited etc and in Walmart parking lots in Planet Fitness parking lots etc to just hang out and get those things done but at the same time time there were a lot of public spaces like I said like parks and stuff where I felt like I could relax go take my lunch there take Pippa out explore go on little walks around the park and then sit down and watch TV and like kind of hang until I found a Cracker Barrel or a Walmart or a rest area to sleep at that night. The difference there being that when I'm out west, I do my little errand running in the morning if I need coffee or food or et cetera. And then I go hang out at my campsite all day instead of going out and exploring. So it's just less movement, I guess, all of the time because you can't just sit and loiter somewhere for hours and hours and hours on end. So you do kind of feel that pressure to get up and move after a while. And if you are sitting in like a Walmart parking lot all day, it's not like I could get out and just like take people on a like full walk. So that's why I really liked that in those areas, they had so many public parks that I could take Pippa on walks with and we could stretch our legs. We were walking around just the same way as we would do out west at our campsite. Now the downfall really came when we left New England unfortunately and I did skip over Virginia. I drove straight through it because I knew weather was coming. I was really trying to time out the hurricane and, and I was going from Delaware down through Georgia to then kind of make a turn to come back west. I did skip Florida on this trip because I'll give Emily Sedona a shout out if you don't watch Emily's vlogs. I was like very much contemplating visiting Florida and she did not have a great time when she was in Florida. We were like literally during this time like passing each other on our trips and I was like you know what I think that's a sign that I should skip Florida and not try it this time around. And so I knew I was going to make a turn. And then once the hurricane was coming in, I figured obviously I was going to skip Florida altogether. Even going down the coast of Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. North Carolina was the worst part of my trip. 
And I say that with kind of a heavy heart because I had a high, high hopes for North Carolina. I, like I said previously, have lived in Tennessee before. So I have visited the Western side of North Carolina a couple times not van life style, but I have done Asheville and the mountain on the western side of North Carolina and have really enjoyed it. So I just assumed that I would like the eastern side and North Carolina really took it out of me. I have never, ever, ever, ever in my life felt more unwelcome, unsafe, and just generally unwanted in an area in my entire time on the road. Other than the fact that I felt that a little bit a couple times in some super small towns in Montana, but generally I can kind of fit in anywhere I go. I have traveled obviously a lot. I'm really good with kind of feeling out the vibes of certain areas, but those small towns that you drive through along the coast in North Carolina, I feel like really want to stay small towns and are just not super welcoming to visitors. Now, did I encounter like the worst people in the world? Absolutely not. I just generally did not feel the like southern hospitality welcome that I was kind of expecting and that I had in my mind that I had gotten on the western half of their state and generally I got really good customer service when I would go places it was just the people who were around and a lot of the like older grouchy white guys like that were at the parks and were on their lunch breaks and things like that very much made it a point to try to like get me to move along out of their city. It just didn't make leave me with a feeling of like wanting to be there which I'm sure was their point um, but it also didn't make me feel super safe either. Obviously there is an issue with just the blatant racism and just general hatred towards lots of different subgroups in those areas that people very proudly display. So I don't know if that caused the general discomfort for me while I was traveling through North Carolina, but it just was not my favorite. And I hate to even say it because I know I have followers there, but it just is the truth. I just didn't love it and it, I could not get out of there fast enough. Now, I went along to South Carolina and had an okay time, but between North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, you cannot overnight at any of the rest areas in off of their interstates. So I had a super, super, super hard time finding anywhere to sleep. So I was kind of forced to do some really stealth camping if there were not any Walmarts that felt safe or Cracker Barrels available uh, because I couldn't even stay at a rest area. So I'm not even sure how that's safe to begin with. Um, to have drivers not being able to re actually rest as they are traveling because yes I do this full time but I was still somebody who was in the situation of like I have to stop driving at some point and rest um, and so I was having to do a lot of like stealthy like hotel parking lot sleeping and that just doesn't give you the best night's sleep because you're kind of always on guard because you're doing something that really isn't like super kosher which is another factor of why I probably won't go back unless I am going back with a destination in mind of like a state park that I'm camping at or some more of the free camping uh, but just in general it wasn't super great again a lot of these towns for some reason also didn't have any like public open spaces. I don't know if I missed them completely, but I had two or three videos to shoot and I usually like to shoot at parks because they have the open space and I can set up and I can walk around with Pippa and I can also then edit while I'm sitting at that park and you're allowed to be there and use the park and it's usually like a pretty backdrop for a video and I could not find any like public parks to hang out at and I searched and searched and even was like texting my assistant about it that I was like 
I almost had like a little bit of like a mini belt mental breakdown because I needed to get a video out that needed outdoor shots and could not find a place to film it and ended up filming it honestly at a rest area that had one hour parking limit. You could only be at that rest area for one hour. And so I had to hurry up and get all my shots and then go sit in a Walmart parking lot to get the rest of my work done. So traveler friendly wise, not my favorite. And I hate to say it because it looked like a lot of these states were super beautiful and super gorgeous. And I did try to make the best of it, but that cluster of states, while I felt way more welcome in Georgia and South Carolina, I just could not make it work for how I have to work and travel at the same time because and then ended up having to just kind of like hurry up and move on. Now that I'm kind of back in the Midwest I would consider I would say that my overall like tension that I felt in the southeast has really kind of dissipated. Again, I'm at a park, like I'm at like a public space, like park again, that I can sit at and also take Pippa on walks on our breaks and can get out of the car and go sit at the pavilion and cook my food and do everything again that I'm normally able to do. But that kind of like tension point of the southeast really is what kind of turned me off to ever wanting to come back unless like I said, I'm doing it to travel as a destination. And I feel like I should be honest with people because the eastern side of the US does get a bad rap for van life. And I can totally, totally see why now, especially because it's off season for RVers. You really do kind of stick out like a sore thumb a little bit. There's not a lot of other people overnight parking. It just doesn't feel the same like you're part of a community like it does when you're out west. And that's what I really prefer and I know that people are bound by jobs and have to make it work on the east coast or on the eastern side but if you are going to visit the eastern side of the U.S. I would highly recommend the New England area and I know a lot of people do love traveling up there there are a lot of outdoor spaces mountains and things like that like obviously the Blue Ridge Parkway I think would be a better choice to travel the eastern side of the United States than trying to go down the coast. Maybe that was my mistake but I was trying to follow some better weather and it just it didn't work out. <laughs> so I wish I had a better video for you guys on the east coast but it turned into just long drive days to kind of move through the southeast as quickly as possible. I did plan on making more vlogs but they all are on the cutting room floor because I didn't do much because there wasn't really anything for me to do after a certain point than to try to just move on because I because even if I did stay in a certain area to go visit a certain thing or a certain tourist spot, I had nowhere to sleep that night and then needed to balance out being too tired to drive versus seeing sights. And at that point, I was just kind of emotionally exhausted about all of it and have decided to move on. So we are headed back west. I'm very excited to be able to relax at a campsite in the desert and have nobody bother me and not be watched while I'm filming and to not have old men come up to me and tell me how much I'm not welcome there. So unfortunately, we are moving on from the eastern side of the United States and I will probably not be back for a very long time. <laughs> So I'm sorry that this video was a little negative. I know that's usually not my style but I did want to be honest with you guys that it's really not worth the trip unless you are going through the Midwest to New England and then maybe do it in the summer or something so you can go back through the Midwest instead of looping down south. On that note, I hope the next video you see from us is a little bit more positive. Like I said, I still did enjoy my trip and I'm glad that I did it. It just wasn't my favorite trip I've ever taken and I am excited to go back to the desert where I feel very comfortable and at home at this point. So more content to come when I get to the desert and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.